servant of God, most welcome. God bless you. We thank God for another time the Lord has given us. Is by grace and grace alone. Uh, this evening we'll have our prayer requests. Uh, Pastor Christian will be praying for these requests later. When he was summarizing what happened yesterday, when he mentioned about when you talk to a man, sing out one thing. The congregation was about to laugh. <laughs> because we know in our families, when we talk, we discuss things, it's normal for ladies to bring a lot of things to one topic. This is normal to them because their brain can handle a lot of things at once. While Hunter's brain can handle one thing at a time. Uh, stop overthinking everything and instead hold each other accountable to speak up when something is bothering you. This is the last thing we said last evening. If you overthink, you want to take everything personally, you will kill yourself. You have to learn how to stop overthinking for your own health. You remember I said that when you think, you trigger some emotions or some hormones, and they will lead you to a certain actions. The brain does not know to differentiate between the reality and imagination. So if you think about something and you overthink, the brain will take it as real and if you repeat thinking negative thoughts, the brain will take it as if it's the truth. Stop overthinking. I said this again. Stop prioritizing your partner's needs at your own expense. We need to strike a balance between taking care of ourselves and each other. When I mentioned this last evening, I got some few comments. Somebody said, my pastor, does that not mean that you are teaching us selfishness? Read the statement. Stop prioritizing your partner's needs at your own expense. There are some people are in marriage, but when you look at them, the kind of marriage they are in, it is as if they are slaves. You are scared of living your own life. You are not free. You just want to do everything so that you can hold somebody who wants to go away. That is slavery. You are a human being. You have your own privacy, in quote. When I say in quote, we'll talk about it later. You have your own life. Even Jesus Christ himself, when he was with his disciples, they were busy serving other people, serving souls and everything. But later Jesus told them, come here alone and rest. Hallelujah. Don't be in a marriage as if someone is controlling you. No. If it costs your health, is not from above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to strike a balance between taking care of ourselves and each other. We have to know this. Stop holding grudges. Mm. Instead, ask each other directly for the change you need to see so you can forgive and move on. This is very important. We have people or spouses who are holding grudges. Talk direct to each other. 
I know some of us, some of us in court, we, we don't speak it direct. There is something which is bothering you. Instead of speaking, you just react. How are you? I'm okay. Is everything okay? As usual. So you want somebody to ask you so many questions. Are you okay? Maybe there is something wrong with me. A lot of questions. Open up. If there is something wrong, speak out. Hallelujah. Remember, I told you that no one is perfect. No one is perfect. You can make mistake without knowing. Are you there? We can make mistake without knowing. But if somebody will tell you this and this is wrong, then you are educated. You know that this is wrong. Stop holding grudges. Instead, ask each other directly for the change you need to see so you can forgive and move on. It depends on the method you want to use, but sometimes I recommend this. You can write down. I want my husband to change on the following things. Write them down. Then show him. Think globally, but act locally. We will teach you as counselors, marriage experts, but you have to listen what we are saying. And you have to know how to put this in action according to the context of your family. Don't take everything as it is. Somebody wrote, as, as I said, he wrote everything. He thinks that the wife will change, the husband will change. And the response was, so you decided to write a magazine for me? Stop holding grudges. Stop your inner critic from taking over. The way you relate to yourself impacts the way you relate to others. Being kinder to yourself helps you be kinder to others. One of the things I do tell these young uh, men and women when they are in courtship, I do tell them there are signs when you, you see them they will tell you what kind of marriage or person you, you have. Like this one. If you get into a restaurant and you see your friend is mistreating the waiter. That is a kind of signs that the same person may mistreat you later. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. If you, do, you don't see the value of the waiter, then you will never see my value. This is a human being. Hallelujah. This is a human being. You, you have to show that you, 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 you know this is a human being. But stop your inner critic from taking over. What does it mean? There is a time you see your own mistakes and you tell yourself everything is wrong. I will not make it. When I stand there, everything is not okay. I don't think that I'm, I will be better enough. You criticize yourself to the extent that you can't go on. Unfortunately, the more you criticize yourself, the more you will criticize others. The way you see deep within is the same way you will see others. Hallelujah. Change. Stop sweeping issues under the rug. Oh. Have you ever seen people, instead of moving those trashes outside the house, they put them under? Under the table, under the chair, under the sofa. They are there. Yes, you will put them under there. We'll see outside as if it's clean, 
But there is something there. And after some times, it will begin stinking. So if there is something, don't sweep under. Share how you feel and what you want to tolerate in the future. You can't grow together if you don't face adversity together. Hallelujah. Yes, talk to your, to your friend. Talk to your spouse. I can tolerate this for this time, but I will not be able to do the same later. This does not mean that you want divorce. No. When you say, I will not tolerate this, it means make sure that you change. But if you keep quiet, you, you keep those things inside of you, they pile up. They pile up. For those who have been in marriage for a long time, they will agree with me this. Most of the problems we are fighting in marriage is the accumulation of many problems unsolved. Are we together? Yes, that's how it is. Stop interrupting each other. Being hard is one of the most important aspects of fulfilling relationships. Take the job of listening just as serious as sharing. I don't know, but maybe you know this. There are those people when you are talking to them, before you finish, they will interrupt you. You have just begun to talk. Yes, I, I know. I, I already know. I know. I know. I know. Then when you are talking, you know when we were in, in uh, Nairobi, it was like this. And I already knew that you would raise up this issue. I know you. Stop interrupting each other. Give the person time to speak out. Learn how to listen. And I told you that listening is an art and science. Even when God was speaking to Samuel, remember, Samuel didn't know how to respond. He went to Eli. Then Eli said, say this. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. When my wife speaks, I know how to support her. Hallelujah. By the way, she's on the way to come here. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll be with her. When she's talking, I'm just listening and nodding my head. That is like telling, keep on talking. You know, it was like this and say, oh, wow, that one, that is tough. You see, keep on talking, keep on talking. If you don't allow your spouse to talk, they will find somewhere else to talk. <laughs> and if they meet the wrong person, they will air out things which they never intended to speak. And it is too late when you say, oh, did I say that? Yes, you was under emotion. That's why you say that. It's like when I'm talking about taking care of our children, I do tell parents, you have to be free enough to your kids to the extent that they can tell you anything. Anything without fear. Because if they don't tell you, they will tell somebody else. You remember I told you the story about a person who was struggling, uh, uh, coming out of being a gay. And uh, then he said, I don't want to meet any counselor. And when he heard that I'm a pastor, he said, okay, I will meet him. I asked, why, why don't you want to meet any counselor? He said, by the way, even yourself, when they told me that to a pastor, that's when I was free to face you. But the challenge I met is, my mother brought me to one counselor, and the counselor told me that it's normal to be a gay. Okay. 
it depends on a person your spouse will open up. Let them open up to you. Hallelujah. Allow your family, your children, your wife, your husband to open up. And, and when they talk, don't judge. How we together? Don't judge. Just listen. Just listen. Then you have to put God's ingredients to get happy marriage. There is those ingredients you can put in marriage from God. You know, every delicious food or drink is a result of well-balanced ingredients. Are we together? Yes, you know how to cook. You know, put, you know how to put this one and this one. You balance, and then it comes out very good. The Bible said homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and what? Understanding. I know some of you will say, but pastor, the Bible says, maybe if we want our marriage to last forever, love must be there. I'm telling you, there are some people who are divorced, but they still love each other. The Bible says homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. You have to put this. Home. What is that? The Hebrew word is bayith. A house. In the greatest variation of applications, especially family. Okay, now let's go back after getting Bayith as a house in the greatest variation of application, especially family. Now let's go back to our verse. Homes, now family, are we together? Homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. Unfortunately, Peter said, likewise ye husband, live with your wife according to the knowledge. Not according to love. According to knowledge. Seek knowledge. Where there is knowledge, the rooms are furnished with valuable beauty of things. Ingredients alone will not produce delicious food. So knowing these things alone will not make a good marriage. You have to know how to apply them. You must have a knowledge. Good marriage will include the following things. Number one, faith. Hallelujah. That's from above. Faith. The Bible says to have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. To be certain of the things we cannot see. Here I'm talking to a person who is in a tough relationship, tough marriage. You, you think like quitting. Don't quit. Have faith. Hallelujah. Just see yourself in a very good marriage. Keep on praying. God will intervene one day. Hallelujah. Going away will not give you a solution. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. Be sure that God will never leave you alone. God is there with you. Faith alone is not enough. There is something we have to add on. For this very reason, do your best to add goodness to your faith. Mm. Don't rush on that. We begin with faith, but faith alone will not help you. The Bible says, for this very reason, do your best to add goodness to your faith. Don't tell me, I believe God will change my marriage. But did you know that if you do good to a person who is doing bad things to you, that goodness will change the person. I know some couples who say, you did this, I will do the same to you. That will not help you. You did this to me, I will make sure that I, I do even more than that. That's not a family, it's a war zone. Revenge. 
No. For this very reason, do your best. Just watch these words. For this very reason, do your best. In other words, there is a time you will feel as if you cannot do it, but do your best. Hallelujah. What is goodness? What is goodness? The personal quality of being morally good. Do your best. Okay. Let me put this way. Before marriage, when you are in courtship, most of the things you are doing, almost 60%, they are moved by emotions, not reality. It's only in marriage whereby you can live with a person, the real one, without hiding any character, but you are told to love the person. In marriage, we don't do good things just because we feel doing. In marriage, you have to do good things because it is right to do good things. Ah, let me repeat this again. In marriage, I don't do good things to my wife just because I feel doing it. I'm doing good things to her because it's the right thing to do good things to her. You see the difference now. In marriage, we don't have so-called, I will give you and I expect to get something from you. No, no, no. It's agape love, self-sacrifice. Do your best to add on. You remember this statement? Do your best. Do your best. Yes, pastor. But this man is very harsh to me. Yes, do your best. But pastor, you don't know how he's treating me. Do your best. Hallelujah. Do your best. I know my wife is fighting so much with my mother. Yes, do your best. Hallelujah. Number two is knowledge, which I've been emphasizing. Always knowledge, 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 knowledge. No one knows everything. No one. We have to learn every day. Second Peter 1, uh, verse 5, the Bible says, To your goodness, Add knowledge. To your goodness, add knowledge. Okay. You can have a good thing to do for somebody, but if you don't know whether it's good to her or him, it will not make sense. In Africa, uh, Pastor Derek and Mrs. Field, in Africa, when we sneeze, we don't say sorry. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> that is Western culture. Why? It is something which just happens. Why should I say, excuse me? It's something it just happened. I never intended. <laughs> Exactly, I never requested. It just happened. So with us, when we see me sneezing, and then I'm just moving on with my things, that is not bad manner. <laughs> but in Western countries, that is bad manner. So you have to learn what kind of person you have and how they can define good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember I told you back home, Lake Zone, almost all of the tribes there, when, when a woman is greeting a man, they bend down a bit. But when you do back home where I'm coming from, when you do that, 
from uh, Pare Mountains, they will tell you, don't, don't worship me, I'm not God. Take time to add knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your wife is not my wife. Yes. Take time to learn about your wife. There are some people who enjoy surprises. Some don't. So don't go with this idea that if you want to make your wife happy, just surprise her. And the surprise you are doing, let's go somewhere. Where are we going? I will tell you later. So you go to a big hotel. You tell her now, order anything you want. You think you'll make her. Some will be happy. But some will say, we don't have even a plot. <laughs> <laughs> you bring me. Take time to start each other. To your goodness, add knowledge. Hallelujah. Let's stand for the word of prayer. As we are going to pray, there are some prayer requests as I told you. One of our friends says, pray for me to get job transfer so that I can be with my children and husband. Pray so that may, uh, God may restore love in your marriage and lift this burden of hate from my husband. This is tough. Pray for me to get a husband who love God and who can take care of me and my children. And the last one, pray for my relationship with my partner that the Lord may continue binding us in cords of love. I give you one minute to pray for our friends who are watching us. Our dear loving Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer you have given us that we can come before you expecting mercy and grace. Father, we thank you because you love us to the extent that we, we call you daddy. We can tell you anything. This evening we are praying for our friends who are watching us. They have sent their prayer requests. Father, we are praying for the one who needs job transfer so that uh, she can be with the family. May you provide this request, and then she will glorify your name. We are praying for those who are suffering from lack of love in the family. May you restore this kind of love, because through the Holy Spirit, you can change any person to be a good person. Father, we thank you because you read our hearts. You read more than what they wrote here, and we believe that by faith, you are going to answer everyone according to your tender care. In Jesus' name we pray.